Hello and welcome to another whiskey review. Today I'll be looking at Ian McLeod's Smokehead. So Smokehead is an Isla single malt scotch whiskey from the Ian McLeod Distillers Limited company and there's no such distillery as Smokehead, it is what they call a mystery malt or a bastard malt because aside from owning the Glengoyne and Tamdu distilleries, Ian McLeod is also an independent bottler of whiskey and blender and that's what this is, an independently bottled scotch whiskey. So it is a single malt but it's a single malt from an unknown undisclosed distillery. So what do we actually know from the bottle? So we know that it's 43% and when I first saw this one I actually thought that it was in a brown glass bottle which is always nice because it means that the colour is a bit irrelevant but it's actually got a very light smoky grey tint and the fairly dark brown colour is actually from the whisky itself. So I would probably say that this is an artificially coloured whisky. It's actually a reasonably similar colour to what you'd see on a, a Lafroy 10 year old. And it's also very, very clear. So I would say this is probably chill filtered as well. Both of those things backed up by the fact that it doesn't say either way on the bottle. So we'd have to assume that it probably is chill filtered and artificially coloured. But at least they are bottling it at a proper strength of 43%. So this one is normally on sale in the UK for about £38 and I got it on special offer from an online retailer for £28. So for £28, let's see what you get. So the first thing that I'm getting on the nose is a really nice ashy sourness. This isn't at all an overly sweet, bland, simple whiskey. It's actually got a lot of character to it. There's a lot going on in there. Also getting quite a lot of medicinal notes, lots of TCP, antiseptic bandages, some tar, coal tar soap perhaps, as well as some wood smoke, some smoked ham notes, and also quite a nice brininess. Like the peat in this, as I said, it's really not a sanitised, simple, friendly whisky. As well as the peat, I'm actually picking up some interesting sort of paraffiny fuel firelighter notes in there and that sounds a little bit unpleasant but it's actually really not it, um, it just adds another dimension to this whiskey and it works really well also getting a little bit of lemon some vanilla peat and a little bit of a cough sweet or fisherman's friend note let's try the palette again lots of sweet ashy warming vanilla peat and I'm also getting a note of salted and smoked fish in there as well and some more brininess really is a, a very good Isla whiskey and I do always like when a whiskey has a nice sour dry edge to it I'm getting some nice grapefruity notes from this one as well as some butterscotch and something that you probably won't appreciate unless you're of a certain age or if you're a bit of a hipster is there's a, a note of old cassette tapes in this that slightly sweet smoky, chemically acrid note that you get from an old cassette tape. Also getting something on the palate that's a bit like an old barbecue that's been out for a few hours, sort of ashy charcoal barbecue aroma. As for the finish, I'm going to say medium long with lots of sweet peat and some acrid peat in there as well. So as for a grade, I'm going to be a little bit bold and controversial here because I think this is really good stuff, much better than you might expect. I'm going to give it an A-. minus. It's got that sweet vanilla peat of a Laphroaig. It's got that sort of sour, fruity, dry edge of an Ardbeg. It's got that ashy peat that you'd get in a Lagavulin. It's even got that slight cough sweet note that you get in a lot of Beaumors. really is a bit of a tall reviler and it's incredibly complex and flavoursome for a whisky at this price point. So how does this mystery Isla malt compare to other Isla mystery malts like Finlagen and the Eluk? I would say that this is much better. I would say that both Finlagen and the Eluk are a little bit too young, quite fatty and quite oily, and not in a good way. 
I would definitely say that this is a big improvement over those two. One of the big questions is going to be how does this compare to other Isla whiskies in a similar price range. I'd actually say that if this is available where you are, there's absolutely no reason to buy the 10-year-old Laphroaig. This does everything that you're getting out of a 10-year-old Laphroaig. It's bottled at a higher strength, at least here in the UK, and it's just a better whisky for your money. If you compare it to something like the Ardbeg 10 or even Lagavulin 16, other entry-level Isla single malts, I would say that those distilleries do offer something a little bit extra for your money, but that's not to say that this is entirely inferior. I'd say that this is around about on par with the Lagavulin 16. So Smokehead Isla Single Malt, thoroughly recommended to anyone out there who wants to try a good but reasonably priced, heavily peated single malt. Cheers.